Greetings. On behalf of the board of Akom Kesi, I give praise to the Abbasum, our ancestors, and Mother Earth. Welcome to another edition of the Akom Kesi Lecture Series. I'm Yao Tyus, and I'll, I'm a board member of Akom Kesi, and I'll also be your MC for today's gathering. Our lecture series is an extension of the work that culminates with our major conference every August. During this conference, we gather to foster camaraderie, fellowship, and networking. We create, maintain, and strengthen families, and friendships. We share wisdom, knowledge, and information that facilitates cultural growth and expression, and we showcase members of the Akan community. If you'd like more information about Akom Kesi, you can find it at aconcenter.org. That's aconcenter.org. Today's topic is Black femininity in America, leadership and submission. Is femininity valuable? Is masculinity valuable? What is leadership? What's submission? Are they related? Should they be reconceived? We'll talk about these topics and much more today. But before we dive in, at least dive in all the way. A little bit about myself. I'm a husband, father of five, and a proud son, brother, and friend. I also have a weekly blog where information is published that supports readers with creating a loving culture in their relationship. And in addition, we have a weekly call for sisters on Tuesdays and at 7 p.m. and one for brothers on Thursdays at 7 p.m. called Creating a Loving Culture in Our Relationship. And information on the blog and the call can be found at franklove.com. Okay, let's get going. Before I introduce everyone, I'm gonna take a liberty and pose an opportunity for the men. So starting from the most senior, I'm gonna ask Doc, would you please share with us a thought or a sentiment that honors feminine energy? Doc, you there? He's muted. He muted. I, I thought you told me to mute and then I forgot to unmute. Okay. <laughs> Want to say Habari Ghani to everybody? It's good to see you. Habari Ghani. Habari Ghani. Jamma. That's a, that, oh, hey. You're Jamma, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. You're with me. I think uh, Mary McLeod Bethune summed up how I feel about women very nicely when she said that next to God, we are indebted to women. First for life itself, and then for making that life worth living. All right. That's a complete, absolutely complete answer right there. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm giving credit to Mary McLeod Bethune because um, when I read it, it struck home. And she deserves it. Thank you. Kwesi, what you what you what do you have? Would you share a uh, a sentiment that honors feminine energy and women? Well, for me, I think the the thing is the the way that I honor it in my my mind is knowing that I'm not always right. So for me, you know, you could be macho, you could be bravo and think that your way is always the way, but with the feminine energy, it brings a different perspective, a, a different um, perspective to whatever the situation is. So for me to honor that is just being conscious of like, you know what, you don't know everything and you need to always be um, <laughs> concerned about the other side of that, that creates that balance. So that's, that's how I'll honor it. Great, thank you. And Brother Quow. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think I'll reference um, James Brown when he um, said it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. So uh, for me, uh, masculinity has no purpose without femininity. So, and, and I would like to, you know, just kind of piggyback on what the elder said is life it, that's the source of life and it gives life its purpose and and renewal of life so and, and makes life enjoyable <laughs> so so um it, ashe, ashe. Hey, <laughs> makes it all worthwhile <laughs> so 
so as men and as a masculine principle, no purpose is had without the feminine. Thank you. And to, to add my two cents to all of it, as a father of three, three young ladies, as a fa as a husband, as a son, as a nephew, I, 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 feminine energy and women, they are, they are, they give so much purpose and and drive to everything, everything in my in my world. In me, women and feminine energy. They mean so much to me. They give such a uh, context to to all that I do, and I appreciate I appreciate each of you, and I appreciate what you bring. Okay. Come on, tell him he don't get. Um, you got Nana, uh, Kung Fu Kwabana on. He's not a panelist. I don't oh, think. Okay. Yes. So he's he's a. He, but we're going to give him an opportunity to weigh in. We're going to give everybody an opportunity to weigh in. Right now, we just we just with the panelists for, gotcha. for so we got a great panel today, and most the most senior, I affectionately call Doc. Doc is a licensed psychologist in the District of Columbia and in Maryland. He's also a discipline, uh, a disciple, of intuitive and epistemo epistemological psychology. On the artistic side, Doc is the creative composer and writer of plays, articles and music that are used in meditation and habit changing. His specialties include neurocognitive psychology, clinical and social psychology, measurement theory, music is therapy, bibliotherapy, and psychological foundations of education. Doc is also the product of an HBCU. And as I read through all of the bios, I think all of us are. <laughs> Uh, his HBCU is Virginia State University. Actually, I believe it was Virginia State College when he graduated. All right. He further <laughs> matriculated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get it? I get it? <laughs> he further matriculated at Indiana University and, and was graduated at the PhD level by the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And last, perhaps his greatest accomplishment is his marriage of over 50 years before the passing of his beloved wife a few years ago, and of course his children. So family, please welcome Dr. James Moses Ballard II to our collective today. Welcome, Doc. That's Doc. fine language for you. <laughs> Doc, is there a relationship between feminine energy and being a woman? And if so, what is it? What's the relationship? Well, this this of course is a opening Pandora's box. Yeah. <laughs> but the way we are um, giving nomenclature to different things today, it's difficult to answer because um, we have kind of fluctuated on what is a woman. Yes. And before you throw something, I'm. You know, we're and right now we're in debate about um, the swimmer, Kia, should he compete in women's sports? Is he swimmer? We don't know. But feminine energy is no question about that. And it is present in men. And in men, it is called uh, anima. According to Jung's uh, theory, it's called anima. And um, it's present in women, it will still be anima in women. So feminine energy is there and there are certain characteristics that are given to it, some of which would be um, positive, I guess. Some of them would be negative, depending on how you want to define women. For instance, being artistic, being patient, being kind, being nurturing, but there are women today who think some of those are insulting or, or do not really speak to the warrior characteristic of women. So you put me in a 
box here, y'all. I don't know which way I should go because last time I got written up by the Afro-American for making a statement that turned out to get some kind of side note in the paper. But I think there is a difference between feminine energy and woman. I think woman is more of a nomenclature. And I think feminine energy is a very natural and biological predisposed um, part of attribute of human beings granted by the mysterious spirit. Thanks, Doc. Our next most senior panelist is mother, as a mother who I've had the pleasure of knowing for, I believe, all of my life. She's a queen mother for the Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland, Canada, and Bermuda regions of the Aceraset Society International. She's been a member of the Aceraset Society International since 1975 and shortly thereafter began her priesthood training where she learned and ascribed to the Assyrian tradition, asserting that we are all divine beings and our true nature is peace. She was installed as queen mother in 1987 by his royal majesty Shechem or Shechem, Ra Un Nefer Amen the I, the king of kings and the chief priest of the Assyrian Society International. Thus, she served as a queen mother for over 35 years. As an Aceraset Society leader, she has extensive counseling experience in various subjects, including spirituality, personal development, relationships, health, and health healing, including pregnancy, childbirth, women's, children's, and family health concerns, education, and other life decisions. For 48 years, she successfully used vegan diet, meditation, herbalism, homeopathy, and other traditional methods of healing for herself, her family, and her friends. She loves teaching, partnering with, and thus empowering others to take ownership of the health and well being of themselves, their family, and their community. Finally, she's a mother, aunt, grandmother, godmother, and a wife for over 45 years. She is Uruat. And in chess, Ra and Kamen. And she gives us and she gives all praises to God and the ancestors for the blessings of family and America and her and in her true home of Africa. Uruat, welcome. Well, first thing I want to say is that you know we live a life, uh, we're all spiritual beings, first of all. And so we can categorize femininity, we can categorize masculinity, but first of all, there's spirit, okay? And so that's why, that's the reason why there's femininity in men and masculinity in women, because spirit is all encompassing, it, it encompasses everything. So your question is, what is the difference between, can you repeat the question again? So is, well, is there a relationship between feminine energy and being a woman? And if so, oh, what is that relationship? Yeah, the relationship is that we were God, <laughs> God given certain talents that are, tend to be more awake in women. You know, we're the ones who have the eggs that, you know, allow us to carry offspring and allow us to nourish those offsprings and give birth. That's not something that men do. So there absolutely have to be particular characteristics that women carry in order to be able to manage that, in order to be able to accomplish that, in order to, and I'm not saying men don't have a purpose in that, that you know, to have a partner, to have someone to assist with that is, is ever important as much as possible. However, whether you have a partner or not, you're built for that. Some people get to experience it in their lifetime and some people do not. But that does not mean that the, you know, the actual trappings or the actual ability isn't there. And there's something that happens when you, um, 
reach puberty, you know, I was uh, worked in adolescent health and women's health. And there's something that goes on when women reach puberty that is very different that goes on when men reach puberty. So there's definitely a relationship. Femininity, you know, people look at certain characteristics and call that femininity. As Doc said, you know, it's kind of getting blurred, but, you know, and people have different definitions of that. But the characteristics that as in our tradition are set represents the great mother. I think, I think we have to realize that um, our ancestry is Eastern psychology, Eastern wisdom, and we're living in a Western oriented way of thinking. Much of the stuff that they say here and that I learned as a psychologist studying what Western people thought, I have had to modify to fit what I've actually seen and lived through and personally experienced. The thing the major take home would be is to respect each other um, regardless of how you might feel in a particular situation in terms of something that you're dealing with or you might just feel that you're right in terms of the direction that you're going. And my, my biggest thing between in terms of with this relationship, these college age kids would be is to to manage just to have that respect. And with that respect, I think all the other issues will work out. Learning how to have that disagreement in a respectful manner. That's where the quote unquote emotional impairment of your children would come along because you're not teaching them conflict resolution. You're not teaching them how to disagree and come up with solutions that can work. <laughs> um, one of the things is I can truly say that um, that has been very helpful with my husband helping me to teach my son um, because I say this as a mother, we always have that, that's our baby. We, you know, we don't want to let go. I mean, you know, the over, you know, oh man, y'all get what I'm saying, right? Absolutely. My <laughs> husband, yes. 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 always tells me, take the titty out the mouth. Yes, come on, sis. Okay, there we go, right? Make sure you catch our next two lectures on April 22nd at 11 a.m. and June 24th at 11 a.m. at a Comcast lecture.eventbrite.com.